Father John Claydar, thank you for joining us for another reflection. Today is August 6th, and it's the Feast of the Transfiguration, that day that Jesus foreshadowed his resurrected body to Peter, James, and John up on the Holy Mountain. And I wanted to talk a little bit about our second reading from today. It's a wonderful reading that, amazingly, either I don't remember from years past or the Holy Spirit kind of just saved today as the moment for me to really have this reading stand out for me, but it's from Second Peter. You know, Peter, the first pope, he's a good dude, but I don't think we often recognize, you know, Paul gets so much credit for the New Testament, which he rightly deserves. And of course, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but Peter's got some great letters with some terrific writings, and this comes from Second Peter, and it talks about uh, the transfiguration a little bit. It says, For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we were made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Right. So this is essentially saying that we didn't just make it up. We were there on the hill. I saw Jesus transfigure. I was there seeing Moses and Elijah and, and had that moment where I said, we should stay here. This is amazing. This wasn't the eyewitness of an eyewitness or my cousin's friend's uncle's barber told him this. Like, no, Peter's like, I was there. For when we received honor and glory from God, the Father, and the voice was born to him by the majest majestic glory, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. We heard this voice born from heaven for we were with him on the holy mountain. And that's Mount Tabor that he's talking about. And kind of foreshadows a little bit of, of the baptism there with the voice coming out of, of heaven. And we have the prophetic word made sure. You will do well to pay attention to this as a lamp shining in a dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. And that was the line that really stuck out to me obviously a beautiful reading, but think of being in a dark room. Think of being in a place where your eyes have adjusted and even there you can't see anything. How bright and poignant would a lamp be in that room? And for us, brothers and sisters, this moment of the transfiguration, yes, it speaks to Christ being divine, but in a real way, it makes us think about something that we say every day in the Our Father. Thy kingdom come. The fact that whenever we say the Our Father, we're praying for the second coming of our Lord. We're praying for the world to end. We're praying for until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Peter's talking about the second coming of our Lord. That moment of, yes, Christ was here, he resurrected, he died, or he transfigured, he died, he was resurrected and went up to heaven, but he's going to come back. And that beautiful moment for us needs to always be on our mind. We are a people of the second coming of Christ. And that might just be like, whoa, that's kind of crazy. You know, 2020 of all times, it feels like the Lord could come back. Who knows? It doesn't matter. It could be now. It could be 7,000 years from now. But when we wake up in the morning, we should treat it as if it was our last day. When we go to bed at night, we should expect that when we wake up, Christ's going to be like, hey, I'm back. And that's it. We've got to be able to live as a people of the second coming of our Lord. So today, brothers and sisters, I ask you, are you, are you living like that? Is there anything in your life that's keeping you from living in this way, from living freely, from living in just the, po uh, the joy and peace of accepting the Lord's will in your life today? So brothers and sisters, I hope you have a great Feast of the Transfiguration. Read the readings that the church gives to us today because they're beautiful. Spend some time reflecting with sacred scripture as we should every day and just ask that the Lord prepares your heart that you may be ready when he calls us home or when he comes back. Brothers and sisters, my name is Father John Claydar. As always, I'm praying for you. Please continue to pray for me. From all of us here at St. Patrick's, God bless you. We'll see you next time.